Hi there, this is Martin Gutenberger. I'll be going over my search pattern for admin CT. Um, the first thing I do uh, after I look at the scout film is I look at the lung bases. So I switch to lung windows. I scroll up and down generally four times through the lung bases. I look at the anterior uh, right lung, posterior right lung, anterior left lung, posterior left lung. So up and down four times uh, just looking for any nodules or masses or consolidations in the lung bases. Um, and then I look at the heart after I switch, uh, go down, make sure I don't miss anything big in the heart, and then I'm done with my lung bases. Uh, at that point, I switch to liver windows, go through kind of the right half of the liver, usually kind of looking anteriorly, uh, and then I go through the posterior right half of the liver, uh, and then I go through the left half of the liver here as I go down. Kind of depends on the person's liver morphology, how uh, big certain lobes are. Sometimes you have to go up and down. Uh, a few more times depends uh, but I just try to break it up into segments as I look through while I'm doing that I'm trying to get a sense of whether their hepatic veins are patent and their portal veins are patent and whether I see any masses um, and after I think that the uh, liver is normal or I found what I found then I uh, look at the gallbladder uh, there I'm looking for any wall thickening or stones I follow uh, the cystic duct you can lose the cystic duct in here especially if it's normal size and then I try to find the common bile duct as it goes into the pancreatic head. There it is. Looks normal in Calvary. This person's isn't dilated, so it makes it a little harder to see, but there it is. Um, then I switch over to the spleen. I uh, just try to determine whether it's normal in size or not. If I think it might be a little bit enlarged, uh, I'll confirm it on coronal images. A lot of times people's spleen will uh, look big on axial, but on coronal it's not big at all. So if I think it's big, then I just confirm it on coronals. Um, after I've looked at the spleen, then I move on to the pancreas. I look through the pancreas there. While I'm looking at the pancreas, I'm looking for any sort of masses. I'm looking for the pancreatic duct. Um, and then I usually am looking at the splenic vessels and portal vein there to make sure that they're patent. Um, after the spleen, then I look at the adrenal glands. So there's the left adrenal gland there, the right adrenal gland there. Just looking for any nodules or masses. And then finally, uh, the kidneys. Make sure they enhance symmetrically, looking for any masses or cysts or stones. Um, so I look through the right kidney and then the left kidney. And then at that point, I've more or less finished my solid organs in the upper abdomen. Uh, and I look real quick at the duodenum coming across to the jejunum. And I look at the right side of the duodenum and then I follow the stomach around into the lower esophagus. Um, just making sure there's no obstruction or inflammation or anything. At that point, then I switch down to the organs of the pelvis, uh, which this patient's a male, so um, we'll see the urinary bladder uh, and the prostate and the seminal vesicles. When I'm looking at those in the bladder, you're looking for any sort of wall thickening or mass or stone within it if they had a recently passed stone. Um, in the prostate, normally you're just seeing if it's normal in size, although you can have prostate abscesses um, for a cancer. Um, then I go through the uh, rectum, and I begin by following the colon up. At this point, you're kind of looking for uh, any sort of colon mass, any inflammation or wall thickening around the colon, or any sort of fat stranding around the colon. Uh, this patient, we've got arrows showing here. He has this uh, fat lobule along his sigmoid colon um, that has a little bit of stranding around it. Uh, it's got a little dot in the middle. That's pretty typical for uh, epiphloic appendagitis, which can be a subtle findings. So that's the cause of this patient's pain. Um, but I keep, after I found that, I, I keep following the colon up, follow it all the way up to the splenic flexure, and then across through the transverse colon, hepatic flexure, down to the cecum. Um, right here is the ileocecal valve coming into the colon. Below the ileocecal valve is where you will see the appendix come off. So there is the appendix right there. Then at that point, I switch over to looking at the small bowel. Most of them just kind of looking through it in quadrants. I'm not trying to follow it anywhere if I don't think it's obstructed. Just look at these loops of small bowel over here, these loops over here as I go up, making sure there's not any sort of mass or mesenteric adenopathy. Here is mesenteric vessels. There's a few small mesenteric lymph nodes, but these uh, aren't very impressive. Um, and after that, then I uh, kind of pass the small bowel. Um, once I've done that, I scroll back down to the uh, bottom of the 
scan and I start looking for lymphadenopathy. So I look in the inguinal regions. I'll do the right inguinal region and follow these vessels up and look for uh, external iliac or pelvic sidewall lymph nodes. Um, then I get to the aortic bifurcation and then I come back down and I do the other side. So look over here for the same lymph nodes. Um, there's a few small little lymph nodes on this guy, but none of them are uh, worrisome. And then I come back up to the aorta again, and now I'm looking for retroperitoneal adenopathy, anything around the aorta. Kind of while I'm doing that, I'm also looking at the aorta, inferior vena cava, making sure they look patent. I'm looking at all these vessels, so the renal arteries and renal veins, making sure they look patent, SNA, celiac. Um, at that point, um, I come back down, scroll through the abdomen, see if I see any ascites, pneumoperitoneum, um, and then I'm ready to switch to the bones. First I uh, just kind of look at the right hip and right pelvis, and then I come down through the left pelvis, left hip, uh, then I start looking more kind of in the midline, pubic symphysis, then down to the sacrum, and then I start looking at the uh, lumbar spine coming up, each level, I'm making sure that it looks like the ring is intact. I'm looking at the transverse processes and spinous processes if there's no fracture and then the vertebral body. Um, you'll see little things like this. These are just Schmorl's nodes. Uh, and then after I've done the spine, then I uh, look at the ribs and sometimes you get the inferior scapula on either side. Usually I'll kind of look anteriorly and posteriorly first. So it'll take uh, once down and once up on each side. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side, once down and once up doing the anterior and posterior. After I finish doing that, uh, the last thing I do is I switch to a sagittal view and I stay in bone windows. And I'm looking at the uh, lateral ribs, looking at the hips and the pelvis as I come across. Uh, and then I make sure the lumbar spine has normal alignment, that there's no compression fractures, no spinous process fractures. I go from side to side and I look at um, all the posterior elements, make sure there's not a pars defect and then come to the other side and then I scroll through to the uh, other side of the abdomen looking at the same things pelvis ribs uh, and then at that point I'm done with my search pattern